Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to the van build. I must apologise that this one is a little bit of a, a jumble sale, but it's just kind of how things happened. Maybe I should have ordered things a little bit differently, but it's a bit late for that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about finishing up the wiring, extending cables, securing cables, and making things all neat and tidy, running a couple more as well, and building the second wheel arch box, the one on the right, that I didn't do before. I decided at this point, for retrospectively unknown reasons, uh, to sort out the rest of my wiring before I finished the control panel or continued with the upper cupboards or anything like that. It was probably because this seemed like an easier thing to do at the time than continuing with the upper cupboards, which were quite finicky and awkward. Yeah, just as a reminder, I'd originally cut my cables to the length required to put them over the wheel arch box on the right. That was where I was originally going to have my 12 volt system. But before I put this all in place, I realized that that was going to mean a lot of my weight. Like the, the serious majority was going to be on the right hand side of the van. And I wasn't super comfortable with that. So I moved everything to the left, which meant I needed more wires because they were having to go further. Now, in reality, I think I would have ended up having to extend a fair few of the cables anyway. So the lesson to learn from this is unless you really have everything planned out, to a T, like you know exactly where every single component is going in your 12 volt electrical hub. Uh, add a good chunk extra wire because it's a hell of a lot easier, like a hundred times more easy to cut down extra wire than it is to extend cables. And there are certainly risks with extending cables like them coming apart of the connections, like you've got different options how to do it, but you know, more connections is just more places for it to fail. And yeah, you just don't really want that. You've also got the added stress of additional voltage drop from the longer cables. Now, thankfully I'd calculated things in a way that meant that I had some spare when I kind of ran the numbers again with the extended length of the cables, everything seemed to be okay. And I think generally I oversized my cables for the most part. I mean, I don't know because it's it's not really that easy to measure the voltage drop after the fact, whether everything's all right, but everything still works. So obviously it wasn't so bad that I caused any issues with things working. I think maybe the lights could have done with being on a slightly bigger cable. Other than that, I think everything worked out okay, but it could have not done. And then I would have needed to rerun entire cables or I could have just extended with bigger cables that would have helped too it would have reduced the voltage drop along that section and that probably would have been enough but yeah it, it's a lot better to just kind of get this stuff right the first time you know just overestimate on everything wiring related basically I extended most of mine using this the blade connections that I was using at either end so as to save having to buy a whole bunch more different kinds of connections really a butt connection is what you want for extending a cable but hey i mean i've not had any issues with it yet time will only tell i i did heat shrink all the connections after i'd done them to kind of insulate them and i think overall the effect that i got was pretty much the same as using a butt connector but a butt connector would have been the most appropriate appropriate tool for the job once i'd finished extending all the cables it was basically just a case of snugly wrapping them all together I think at this point I already had them wrapped by route, so each different location in the van that they were heading to, all the cables from there were joined together to help me know which one was which as I was kind of wiring them up and labelling them initially. But here I basically wrapped them all together so that they were just one big bundle that I could then route around the things that were sitting in the van on the floor, like the sub, to get to their ultimate destination. I was then able to tie that in place and secure it with the 3M backed cable tie eyelet strip things secured with a screw because sticking on wood is no good. I then ran a few cables for the bits that I'd missed. I think it was like root D in my original plan, essentially providing for a 12 volt socket and two USB sockets, which is one component for the front of the bed. And yes, I know more sockets, but in, in my opinion you can't really have enough and as it happens they have come in helpful the 12 volt socket is really useful for my 12 volt vacuum cleaner and also for using my tire pump for getting the 
the rear right tire it's the only one that will reach to it and it only just reaches but it does so good and the usb port is actually where i usually have my router plugged in because i i rest it on the blind of the window at the back so that it's sort of technically technically physically it's physically outside of the body of the van and it can get much better signal uh, which is especially important in places where i don't have very good signal it means the difference between a basically unusable connection and one that works reasonably okay-ish. Then the fuse box end, I took all the positives and bundled them together and then did the same with the negatives and kind of attached them, connected them again in a semi-logical manner. With the negatives, it didn't really matter so much. I just kind of put them in an order that seemed to make sense to me at the time. Positives mattered a bit more because I had two different fuse boxes with two different sizes of cable that were going to it. So each of them could handle different total currents. But I'd already planned out which was going into which and I basically just stuck to the plan. Um, having calculated this all up front, I didn't really have to worry about doing it wrong at this stage as long as I didn't go off menu and yeah I made sure to have everything labeled up at the fuse box I basically just used masking tape and wrote on it with pen which route it was and what it was so I can easily tell the fuse box which fuse is which quite helpful looks a bit messy but overall I'm really happy with how the cable management ended up my life has always been a mess of wires and in fact like if you looked at my desk right now you would see that entirely confirmed there's just cables everywhere so this was definitely the best cable management I've done so far and I think most of it does actually look quite neat I'm quite happy with it really next I set my sights on the right wheel arch box again not exactly sure why I think I was just putting off doing the stuff I didn't want to do and thought I'd do something which I'd done before which would be a little bit more straightforward as I had done it before I kind of knew and knew how it was going to fit together it was a very similar job to doing the other one really but just this time in the nice sexy poplar ply nine millimeter because it didn't need to be as strong as the one holding up all of the electrical components because they're quite heavy although in reality I think it holds quite a lot of weight and is doing just fine just from the stuff that I've put on top of it. I used a pretty similar strategy to before, cut out the pieces, um, initially cutting out the side, the top and one end piece, because I was gonna try and not have an end at the other end, but I ended up going back on that later. And I, I used the same strategy of just kind of attaching batten to the pieces rather than building a frame because it's only like it's an incomplete box so having a full frame didn't really seem to have much benefit the the batten's basically just there to give everything something to screw to so it didn't really need a freestanding frame and i think that worked fine it's probably not the most woodworky way of doing things but you know honestly it's clear at this point that no nothing i'm doing is the most woodwork way of doing anything i was just trying to find a way that it works and that's kind of the point of this video series is to show you that you don't have to do things super properly to get something that works someone's had attached all the bits of batten and put the thing together put the end on i put it in place and realized that it was just really unstable with only one end piece it was just wobbly and horrible so i ended up cutting another end piece this time out of leftover nine millimeter boring black brown old ply i think it's eucalyptus and poplar or something like that attached this to the end so i had two ends and then i put this in place and realized it didn't really quite fit flush to the floor properly the the like the curved curved edges of the wheel arch box was kind of causing some issues things were in the way so i got my trusty handsaw out and just kind of like hacked corner off and that kind of helped get it into place at least well enough to to move forward and stick it down but first up i had to insulate the wheel arch i didn't go as hard as i did on the other one where i coated it in foil and then used kingspan and spray foam and stuff this time i just covered the whole thing in foil using just bits and pieces that i had left over i was kind of less worried about it being properly insulated on this side i wasn't really convinced that it was going to make that big of a difference to anything it just made sense to have some insulation there that was something is better than nothing for sure and then fitting it I used a pretty similar strategy again kind of having the bottom bit of frame of the structure on the outside because I was going to need something on the outside anyway so I put it in place cut a batten to run along the floor screwed that into the floor and then screwed it into the side of the wheel arch box 
the top was a little bit more complicated. So like once I'd done that, I it really wasn't stable enough. Just like that, it was very wobbly and just just didn't feel very secure or strong. So it was clear that I needed something on the top as well. There wasn't anything to screw into to, at the height of the Wheelotch box in the wall, but there was just a little bit higher up. So first I had to find where that piece of wood is because once you've covered it, it's very difficult to tell. Like I was poking and prodding and I, I kind of was in the right zone. So it only took me two tries to get the right spot, but I did get it. And it was kind of fine because it was going to get covered up by the, the wood anyway. And then I made a sort of T-shaped piece of batten. So with the vertical reaching up to the wood screw into and then the horizontal just running along the top of the wheel arch box. And yeah, just screwed and glued that together and then screwed it into the wheel arch box and screwed it into the wall in a couple of places. And at that point it was pretty stable and yeah, looking pretty good, looking pretty neat. Sort of covered up some of the rough edges as well and made it look a little bit more like I knew what I was doing. At that point, it, it felt good. So I think that's that's it for this one. It's been a little bit random as it is. Um, next, we'll be moving to the control panel and upper cupboards again, finishing off getting everything wired up in the control panel so that there's lights and switches and buttons and ooh, it's exciting. And yeah, framing for the, the right upper cupboard as well. If you made it this far, well done. Thank you. Um, likes and subscribes, highly appreciated. But I'll catch you in the next one. See you later, taters.